Alright, so things are getting serious. This is where we are going to review our fittings. There are a lot of them. And I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you have enough of them for your build. On your screen you can see a bunch of different fittings and sensors that we are going to need for our loop. So let's review them one by one. Here is a pressure fitting. Probably the most important part, you can open it like this. The left side has a barb which connects to the plastic hose and once connected you just screw back the socket onto it and that will assert a pressure on the hose and make it watertight. Here is our valve adapter. Now that's an optional item I added to the build which will let us drain the system with ease whenever we need to. This is a T-block adapter. This part will be important if you want to install a drain pipe or a temperature sensor to your loop. Next come our 90 degree elbow fitting, particularly useful when you want to avoid bending your tubing. This is simply a seal plug. And finally our temperature sensor, very useful to monitor the water temperature of your loop. And that's that for that, now let's install them. Pressure fittings are very easy to install. Here we will attach four of them, two on the CPU block and two on the motherboard. First we will remove the pressure ring from the pressure fitting and carefully screw it in place. Don't tighten it too much, finger tight is enough at this stage. Keep in mind that in the future stage of your build you might want to remove them and replace them with an elbow adapter or even an extender. Even though I am not certain that they will remain in place, I usually assemble them just to make sure I have enough of them and that I'm not missing anything at this stage of the build. We are going to do the very same operation on our top radiator. First we are going to remove the factory plugs which are sealing the radiator. And we are going to go ahead with the installation of our pressure fittings. Finally, same operation with our bottom radiator. The only difference is that on this one we are going to add a 90 degree elbow. This will allow the tube to have direct access to the fitting without bending. Now it's going to be a bit tricky, simply because the radiator is so close to the PSU. So take your time and make sure that the pressure fitting is well in place and tightly screwed onto the radiator. Here we will assemble our pump inlet. It will be equipped with a temperature sensor, which will be plugged onto the motherboard and allow us to keep a close eye on what's going on in your loop. First, let's grab our T-block and screw in our temperature sensor. Make sure that it is securely tightened together. And using a seal, we are going to plug the opposite hole of the thermometer sensor. Let's go on the back of the computer. Open the tray to have a clear access to the pump. Here we are going to assemble our T-block onto the pump inlet. And now we are going to place a 90 degree elbow adapter onto the pump outlet. And now carefully I'm going to add a pressure fitting to that elbow. To avoid any kind of tube bending, I have decided to add a 90 degree elbow on the pump inlet as well. And to ensure a wider space between the pump and the pipe, I am using a longer and wider 90 degree elbow. 
As you can tell, there's not much to it. It's pretty straightforward and simple to install. That last part was as complicated as it can get. If you feel that you followed correctly all my instructions until here, then we're looking pretty good. Alright, so this is an optional step. I am going to install 40mm extensions right here on the top radiator. Once installed, the extensions should make it easier for us who have access to the pressure fitting, especially in a tight build like ours. It can get really tricky to maneuver your fingers in small narrow places. So first things first, let's remove the pressure fittings that we have just assembled in the previous step. And now let's just screw together the pressure fitting and the extension. And now time to screw it back into place. And again, this is a completely optional step. If you do not have any extensions with you, uh, you can just ignore it and continue the build. In order to install our last pressure fittings, we first have to install the video card in place. To do so, simply remove the metallic shields at the back of our casing. For this particular case, we have to remove the second and third shield starting from the top. Once done, delicately insert our expensive and shiny video card into the 16-speed PCI slot. Starting from below our CPU block, this will be our first available PCI slot. The two other PCI slots work at 8 and 4 speed. So the video card will still work, but just not as fast as if it was on the 16 speed PCI slot. Now that the video card is securely fixed onto our computer, it is time to install our pressure fittings. Now, on each opposite side of our pressure fittings, we will have to screw in a plug. Nothing difficult about it, but just make sure that it is tightly secured onto the water block. 